All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about a message instruction going from one PLC to another PLC. And this is going to be a message write instruction so that basically we understand um, between the difference in the control logics uh, family of processors, which could either A be the Studio 5000 version 35 that I'm currently using, um, using through the emulator, or a RS Logics 5000. Uh, processor using a real world processor. This is the same common things that you will be using. Now, I am a big fan of using uh, produce consumed, right? So I have my IO tree. I have my processors down here in my IO tree. You can easily see that I have this working right now. Um, what I'm going to actually show you is if I influence the data, like in this, uh, the currently I have machine one and machine two right here. You can easily see that this does work. So if I have uh, basically bit zero if I put a one in bit, bit zero it comes on on the second processor which is machine two uh, again I am using the emulator so I'm using slot uh, 11 and 12 now again you could use a real processor and no matter where what slot you're in and you don't actually have to have these set up in the the actual um, IO tree of the actual processor although in the instance of how I'm using it you do so um, let's just actually show that and let's just come over here and influence another bit real quick so you can, so you can see it this would be bit bit uh, right here bit 5 so you can see that does we are working now <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete the message instruction and uh, for one I want to actually show you that there is no uh, controls over here in, P in the machine too. So just because you're doing a, a, a message write does not mean you need to have a message read. Okay. Um, in this case, we're just writing data over, or you can do the the opposite of that, and you could actually just read data from one PLC to another PLC. Uh, so in 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 the instance of writing data right here, I could actually come over here in, in the second PLC, which is machine. Um, to communications I can actually you know put a read in there and then read the data that's being written over there it's just the same it will work just the same it just depends on which one you want to work or which one you want to actually have the um, logic in um, just keep in mind keep it consistent uh, you know when you're working on these and you're seeing these working in the real world I do know that even though I'm a big fan of produce consumed that message instructions are highly used so let's go ahead and um, basically eliminate or delete our data here. Um, what I'm going to do real quick just to make things easier on me is I'm going to copy the name and we're going to delete that um, right here and we're going to come in and add it back. Now what I'm going to do just to make this fair so you can see the whole program being built is I'm going to actually delete the instruction altogether. So I'm going to go to edit tags delete the instruction so that there is no way for me to actually influence the data. So if you look now, <clears throat> I cannot influence the data. Okay. You see, I put a one in, in machine one, and then I come over here. I do not see that uh, you know, transfer over here because I don't have a message anymore. So let's go ahead and add our message in here. We're going to go into uh, add a room. We're going to come over to where it says input output in our instruction tab and we're going to go to msg pull that down we're going to give our tag a name so we're going to right click and go new tag i'm going to paste in the same name that i made now here's a, a part where you can actually open the message configuration up <clears throat> based upon this checkbox right here if you are setting the message up right from the very start right or if you just wanted to come over here and not check this box you can hit create and hit the ellipse button right here and then go to configuration now this is where probably a lot of questions are going to come in place because this is when it comes to message type uh, the message type can be changed uh, to many different things again we're going to be concentrating on SIP which is going to be the control logics platform although you can write to PLC 2 PLC 3 PLC 5 and Circos which would be like servos and also the slick which is the P, uh, PLC or RS Logics 500 so um, 
is keep in mind that, that you can do many different types of PLCs. Uh, in our instance, we're going to concentrate more on the, and I'm going to show you right quick the difference between a SIP data type, um, no, SIP uh, data table, right? If I choose that, see how simple this looks? It's just the source and then the destination. Now, contrary to that, if I go to generic, which I've seen a lot of generic messages set up in, my, in the past, then you would come into service type. <clears throat> now the service type, it then comes to the point where you want to either write, in our case, we would do a read write parameter because we're trying to be read or write. Okay, so if we did a write parameter, the confusing side to this would be, okay, we need to know the instance. Um, and again, that comes down to um, many different things. Like you, if you change to, let's just say a uh, single attribute, okay? Then you need to know the instance, the class, and the attribute. So the easier thing for all of us, and this, this illustration is to go to a SIP data table, right? Okay, so uh, we're gonna pick our data which is going to be this first word right here. It's basically, I uh, have the data set up the identical. I have it named machine, whatever the machine name is, and then bit. Um, it's going to be a, a dent. <clears throat> so let's cancel out of this real quick. We'll go to dent right here. Okay, so it's a dent, it's 32 bits. It's zero through 31 on both PLCs. Both, both PLCs are, again are working through uh, slot 11 and 12 and are using emulator. So um, with that said, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up, finish setting up our message. All right, so uh, currently we have generic. We're going to pick a SIP data table read. We're going to put in our data. Okay, we're going to put in the instance that we are like the number of elements that we would like to transfer. Uh, just because it's 32 bits, we're actually going at the word level. So we're actually going at the very top level. We wanna choose one element. If we were to use like multiple different like individuals, like if I started this with bit one or bit two, then I would change the element size. Now, the thing over here is you, you see the source element I could choose because that's the source and that's built into my, my first PLC, right? Which is PLC one or our machine one. The second instance, I, I come over here to open up my, my uh, second machine, which is in my case, machine two. I would just copy the tag and then paste it in the destination. So the make sure you whatever you're trying to write from your source and your destination are both the same data types. That's very important. And that you have the number of elements correct. Now, if I choose uh, and apply right now, it's still, it's going to error out because I don't have a path. So um, even though I have this set up, the configuration, I need a path. Now this is very simple for me because I have both of these set up in my process or my racks right here. You can see, both processors are in both racks of each processor, meaning that machine one has the machine two in it and machine two has machine one in it, similar to what we would do with produce consumed, right? Um, that is, uh, sometimes it's set up just like that. And sometimes you don't even have to have them. Actually, you just to clarify this, you do not have to have the PLC processor in the IO tree at all. You just need to have conductivity to it. But in that case, it kind of confuses the issue because you need to know how to set the path and meaning we would be at the root level. Um, are you going, are you traveling through a, you know, like a uh, ethernet module or something like that? You would need to know all that information. So in our case, we're just gonna pick browse and we're gonna go to the second processor. We're gonna click okay and hit apply. And then at this point, we need to have some kind of um, you can't just let this run all the time or else it'll just run one single time and that's it. Uh, in our case, it would still, being that we're periodic tasks, it would actually um, run multiple times. But let's just come over here and put this in here. We're, we're going to drag the message name and then we're going to change that to uh, use the enable bit. Okay, so the enable bit, what it's going to do is say, okay, it's going to 
turn off every time this instruction is enabled. And then it, as soon as it finishes, it will drops the enable bit and then it allows it to continue back again. So remember we have bit one on over here. It's okay. So we're going to go ahead and hit apply. You can see it's done. Okay. So you can see the enable bit dropping as soon as it goes done and the transfer did take place. Now, if I change this over here, it's going to change back because it's being influenced by the first machine. It's being controlled again through the message instruction of the first machine. Now, if I change this and I also can not just do a bit, I can do the word level. So let's just say I wanted um, to our 512. Okay. 512, you'll see bit right here. Bit nine is on and bit nine is on over here. Now that's the decimal form for bit nine. Okay. I just happen to go from that and know that. And, and again, if I chose to put this as zero and do the next one, it's going to be 256. And that way you can see that just like that. And that's just going through binary coded decimal, right? Because we're using 32 bits and that's zero through 31. Um, so that's uh, again, I just wanted to show you how to how a message instruction works and the important side of a message instruction. I don't need to have a read over here. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I, I don't have to have any logic whatsoever over there front on the second PLC to actually have it be, you know, manipulated. And that's just because in this case, it's a write. Now, uh, again, we could do a read similar. We would just do everything in reverse and we would have everything over here in the second uh, the second PLC, which is machine two. So don't think that if you're using a message instruction that you need to have a read and a write because <clears throat> you just, you just need to have one, excuse me. Um, so you just need to have one when it comes to that. Um, just keep in mind that is something that kind of confuses, um, people in the very beginning of learning messages and message instructions. Um, again, there are some complex things that you can do with messaging. This is a very, very, very simple illustration. So the, the setup that I've just showed you and showed you how to build is a SIP data table write. Okay. Now, again, we could do a read and that would be reading the data from the opposite. Okay. So if I change that real quick and I, to change it, what I would do is I would stop. I would stop the actual message instruction from, from firing, from, from actually using. Uh, being used or are being controlled through the PLC. I would come in here at that point, then you could change it and I'll go to a read. Okay. And then I'll do my source. It, you see how it just changed my source, but that's when you put your source over here and, and then your destination down here. Now what's going to happen here is now that I'm reading, I can manipulate the data on PLC two. And so when I do that on PLC two, it's going to, you can easily see that right now, this is a zero and you can see that this is currently still 256. Now, if I take out the AFI and I allow this to actually uh, be controlled or be uh, scanned through the program, you can see that now the data is zero. So if I try to write something over here on the main, on the master now on the, on a PL or the first PLC, it's not going to do anything because we're actually reading data from machine two. So let's just put 256 back in and you can see that 256 works. So now the person controlling the data is going to be machine two. So we can easily do that just based upon changing uh, and manipulating what we want to do, either a, a read or a write, right? And that's based upon, you know, and the read could be in the other PLC and the write could be in the other PLC. It just depends on how you want to set it up. I do highly recommend that if you are setting up multiple messages that you put in like timers and stuff like that to keep it where it's not trying to do multiple things at once, like have one message instruction read at the same time another message instruction happens because Again, the data could actually, you know, mess up. The processors are really strong these days. So I, the, the odds on that happening are very limited, but it does depend on your network conductivity and stuff of that nature. In my case, it's not ne necessarily based on network conductivity because it's all local on my, my current machine that I'm running. 
um, meaning it's local on the VM that I'm running because I'm, I'm running to emulate or I'm running a Studio 5000 logic to emulate. So um, I know this video was kind of long, but I wanted to show you some very important things about message instructions and just a simple uh, topology and the way things are working so that you can actually understand the way, you know, data flows from one to another. Again, I'm a big fan of produce consume, so that's what I would generally use. But hopefully this taught you a lot and we'll see you guys on the next one.